Cambridge Analytica, the British data mining firm, has now suspended its CEO, Alexander Nix. Now, this follows allegations that the company improperly used data of Facebook users to help the 2016 Trump campaign. Now, this comes on the very same day that the British government asked Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg to testify about those allegations. Now, this follows a whistleblower report from a former Cambridge Analytica employee who said the company used the Facebook data to build psychological profiles so that voters could be targeted with ads and stories. An undercover British reporter has video of the company's CEO saying that the company could use unorthodox methods to wage successful political campaigns for clients. For more on this ongoing data controversy, we're joined now by k 2 tech expert Ryan Eldridge from Nerds on Call. Uh, and boy, Ryan, uh, this is getting ugly. Oh, it is. It is It is blowing up everywhere. And it's uh, very salacious for somebody like me that, that loves data and I love uh, internet culture and things like that. So essentially what happened is back in 2014, a Cambridge University scholar named Alexander Kogan created a, a personality test that he unleashed on Facebook. And about 270,000 different users um, took the test and to find out what their personality was. Are they, you know, are they a cat or are they an Obi-Wan Kenobi or whatever, whatever the results were. The problem is, is this data then also looked at all of their networks, their friends, their families, and was able to scrape data from all of their social networks, essentially. And this wouldn't have been a terrible problem because in 2014, this was a pretty common occurrence from uh, games that were being developed on Facebook to yeah. these kinds of apps, to all kinds of stuff. What, what, what violated Facebook's policies and what made Facebook make an announcement on Friday that they had suspended Cambridge Analytica was this scholar then passed this data over to Cambridge Analytica. Mm -hmm. And Cambridge Analytica is, of course, they, they've come out and said, we never used the data. When Facebook told us that uh, it was a violation of their policies, that we deleted the data. Um, and so without a further investigation, we can't tell what's true or what's not. What we do know is that 50 million, potentially 50 million people's user profiles and personal information may have been leaked uh, to this company. Yeah. And Facebook did not acknowledge or, or let anybody know that this kind of thing was happening. Yeah. So, Ryan, I, I guess this is the big question. How much of this is about a research firm essentially duping Facebook, right, out of this information, or about Facebook not having enough safeguards in place? It's really more about Facebook not having enough safeguards. Mm. So I, if anybody who's ever used the Facebook platform, they already know that their entire life is being kind of an open book for Facebook to look at from their friends, their families, pages they visited off of Facebook, uh, things they like, companies they follow, uh, just all kinds of information is being held by Facebook. Yeah. And if I can reach just one of your friends or your family members mm -hmm. who also has connections to you, I can start scraping your data as well as there. Now, Facebook has said that they've, they've limited the amount of data that third party people can get or third party developers can get this way, but they haven't really said how much data are they allowed to get. Is right. it 10 million now? Or, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so Ryan, uh, before I let you go, this has really turned into a high profile crisis for Facebook. Stock is down. There is yes. mounting pressure on Mark Zuckerberg. A hashtag uh, that is delete Facebook is yes. trending now. Uh, what do you see happening in, in the coming days here? Well, let, let's. I, I think what I see coming in the next couple of days is it's it's going to be uh, revealed again how in, intrusive social media can be and and how much of our life we're letting go online and and ignoring our privacy. So there's a couple things you can do to protect yourself, and I want to get this out before uh, you let me go. First thing you can do is if you want to find out how much data Facebook knows about you, go to your general account settings tab. And there's a spot where you can download all of your data that Facebook knows about you from your demographics, how much your, uh, you know, what your age is, how much you make, all of that stuff. Uh, you can also look at your Facebook security settings and shore those up. Add an ad blocker to your browser if you're going to be using it on a PC so that we can limit how much data advertisers are able to see while you're on the platforms. Uh, and then also just keep an eye on the apps when you install them. They're going to tell you what, they're, what data they're going to try and fish mm -hmm. from your profile or from your friends. And before you download and install something, read their terms of service. Just, I know you don't want to do it, yeah. people, but do it. <laughs> uh, it's pages long, though, but, but very good advice there, Ryan. Uh, always a pleasure. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Well,